Okay, so this is going to be the last um, section of our safety lecture, and we're going to talk about safety for health professionals. And there are several different areas we need to talk about. Um, it's very, very common for people in healthcare to have their careers end um, abruptly or end early because of back injuries. So one of the major things you need to know about um, safety is preventing injury to yourself when handling patients. When you're lifting, you want to use larger muscle groups, uh, like especially your legs. You want to tighten your abdominal muscles. That gives your back some support. Distribute your weight as evenly as possible along those large muscle groups. Flex your hips, knees, Flex your hips and knees and keep your back straight. That puts the, uh, the bulk of the weight on your legs. Use a wide base of support. Bring the load close to your body for stability. And uh, to show you why this one matters, this one people don't really think about. And I see patient, I see uh, staff members a lot of times lifting way um, far away from them or lifting the patient uh, by holding the draw sheet way out at the edges. Take a book and hold it out away from you and pay attention to how tired your arms get and how quickly, and then hold it closer to you. That close, bringing the load closer to you, holding the draw sheet closer to the patient is gonna decrease the amount of weight that your arms are having to handle. Um, use assistive devices when, to move patients when possible uh, and ask for assistance when needed. Um, I think we're finally getting away from the hero days when people said, I can do my own lifting, I don't need help. That causes harm to the patient, it causes harm to uh, staff. So get help, um, use proper body mechanics. When you're pushing or pulling something, again, you wanna use a wide base of support. It's safer to pull objects towards you and rather than pushing them away from you. So the person, if you're pulling a patient to one side of the bed, the person who's pulling is going to have more, more of the, is going to take more of the weight. Okay. Pull objects toward you rather than pushing them away. If you need to push something away from you, you want to move your front foot forward. When you're pulling, you want to move your back foot backward. Okay. Um, face the direction that you're moving. So don't twist your body face the direction that you're going. Use your body as a counterweight when you're pushing or pulling and avoid twisting and bending your back with your legs straight. You wanna move your hips, not twist your back, okay? For transfers, you want to know before you start that transfer, can that client bear weight? Can they help you with that transfer? How much weight can they bear? And can they cooperate? And if they're not able to cooperate, um, then you need to get some help and do that as a total lift with assistance. You should evaluate the need for equipment or assistance before you get partway through that transfer. Some general guidelines, use lifting devices when possible, like the Hoyer lift, uh, use assistance as needed, plan transfers and lifts, especially if they're gonna be challenging. You wanna plan who's going to do what, make sure everyone, including the client, knows their job and the count, okay? Um, I always like to give clients instructions, even pulling them up in bed. You want to have the client put their chin on their chest, cross their arms so they're not grabbing the rails. Um, if they're able to help with their legs, bend those knees and push with their feet as you lift them up, and that's going to make it safer for everyone. You want to keep your head and neck in line with your pelvis. Okay, so just think about your head and neck being in line with your pelvis. Um, use smooth movements, not jerking. And it's going to decrease your risk for injury if you maintain arm, leg, and core strength. So um, um, some workout time or some uh, muscle, uh, some, some weight lifting is beneficial. Um, when you're using assistive devices with a patient, you need to make sure you're using them properly and you need to teach patients how to use their assistive devices properly. So Back injuries and lift injuries, things like that are very common, but something that's become more common recently is violence. Um, so one of the first things we need to do um, in any situation is recognize or identify that a patient or a family member or a colleague is at risk for violent behavior. Um, learn to identify when people are near 
um, that edge and learn some de-escalation techniques. So if you want to help calm someone down and prevent violence, you want to not argue. You want to use some empathetic listening, okay? Use those therapeutic communication techniques that we talked about in the other lecture. Use a non-threatening posture. If you're looming over someone that causes them to be fearful, fear um, can lead to violence. Use a low, soft voice, okay? So try to de-escalate. While you're de-escalating, don't get trapped. Don't let the patient, the, the angry person, patient, visitor, whoever, don't let them get between you and the door. I mean, you stay between that angry person and an exit at all times. When should we involve security or the police? Um, security and the police can be involved when um, they're going to um, be needed for actual physical control of that client. Um, they're probably not going to use the de-escalation techniques, but if that if uh, that client is putting others at risk and can't be de-escalated, then you're going to need to involve someone who can physically control that client. Okay, that's the end of the safety lecture. We have one more left in this unit.